Hi folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. This time we are back on discus. So I've got two of these fish in here, which hopefully I'm showing you a picture of now. They are the randiest fish I've ever had. They're constantly together laying eggs, guarding eggs, causing fights, causing trouble. And well, time for them to get a room more than anything else. So we're going to make that happen. I'm going to get these fish out and I'm going to take them down into a tank that I've prepared in the fish room. Uh, talk a little bit about how I've set that up and what I'm going to do to give them a little bit of a chance to see how they get on. I'm just going to fill up a little bucket and net them out and take them downstairs. I've prepared this tank here for them, I've got it up to temperature, the temperature matches that of it. the tank upstairs, the water parameters match it across the board, um, it's just a plain, not plain, it's just a plain bare bottom tank, I've got a breeding cone in there and I've got a sponge filter on this side and another one on this side, so I'm just going to drop the, the fish straight in because I know the water parameters are exactly the same, so we can get them straight in there. So the main reason to have them down here is that it gives the rest of the fish a break because when these two breed, they seem to be... Well, I don't know if it's any worse than any others, but I, every time I catch them, or every time I walk into the room, they're kicking the crap out of one of the other fish, and uh, scaring them away from the corners. Now, I don't encourage them to breed, and to be fair, these aren't a very good pair. So, the fry that I might get from these fish, I'm not going to get half this fish and half that fish. I'll probably get maybe one or two of this, one or two of that, and a load of brown fish. But you know, it's always good to have a wee breeding project going. It's more about giving the other fish a bit of a rest and letting these guys get through it. Normally when I don't want to encourage breeding, I'll just wipe the eggs away as soon as they get laid. Uh, and that's that. But these have been going at it kind of once a week, almost, laying eggs. Um, well, maybe a bit longer than that, but it seems like I'm constantly battling with them to get a little bit of calmness and harmony in the tank. So this will give them a go, let them do it to fruition. The last few times that I've done it, I've not bothered trying to wipe them away. And they would normally, they would um, either get eaten during the night or not come to fruition one way or another. But recently they've been raising them to getting them to wigglers, moving them around to different places and you could just see it was stressing them out because they were constantly having to battle against all the other fish trying to protect them. So if I have them in here, no one else is in the tank obviously and no one else is going to try and stress these guys out and then they won't stress them out defending the eggs. So I've given them a cone as you can see, this big um, dildo shaped thing is uh, a discus or angelfish breeding cone um, if my experience tells me anything they'll completely ignore that and lay it on the heater or lay it on the filter or somewhere else completely stupid but you know it's in there um, I'm following my usual practice of breeding where I get them in this tank bare bottom I can keep it really clean um, I'm not going to dick around with the water I'm not going to alter the water parameters if I was doing this seriously, I'd be putting in RO water and I'd be remineralizing afterwards. This is just the plain tank water that they normally get. I filter everything through an HMA filter, which takes away all the nasties. But this gives me a nice little controlled space where I can get them conditioned. I can feed them up nice and heavily, make sure they're in tip-top condition and give them the best chance to get a batch of fry on the go. And in terms of feeding them up, one of the things I like to use is this frozen brine shrimp. Um, it's a really good food to use, so you can put it in there, and with, especially with discus tanks. Because the water's that bit warmer, it starts to dissolve, or defrost rather, almost immediately. And it's a really good food for the fish. Now, I've only just moved them into this tank, so they'll probably just ignore this for the time being. Um, but this is a really good food because they lap it up. Um, it makes them put on weight, keeps them in healthy condition. And because I've moved them down into the fish room, it's just so much easier to clean it up. So if they ignore this completely, as they, I suspect they may, just from being stressed from the move, um, I can just get in there, scoop it all up, I don't have to worry about substrate or decorations or things getting in the way. I can just make it nice and clean and I can keep it clean. 
obviously I've got all this hooked up to my auto water change system so that thing there that you can see poking in that is that's the drip tip that feeds off my HMA filter it's constantly running or I can control that to see how much I want it to run and then it overflows into this pipe here and then off to the drain I can turn that off, I can drop the water level, I've just got so much more control in here of what I want to do. And there you go, they're going for it now. I think they've had enough of being shy. So they can feed themselves, gorge themselves on that, get themselves nice and fat and happy. And then hopefully in a few days, well they've actually just finished the last batch up in the other tank, so maybe in a week or so's time we should have some more eggs again. Um, like I say, they've had half a dozen if not more attempts in the display tank so I thought just give them a bit of a chance to have a go at it properly the batches have been getting bigger and bigger each time as well so let nature take its course when you say get a room they've got a room in terms of the other tanks that I've got down here in the fish room we've got a bit of a, a breeding boom going on at the moment this tank here you'll remember uh, is the bristle nose breeding tank. We've got all kinds in here. We've got the super red bristle nose, we've got your plain, your calicos, your lemons and albinos and they're just going crazy on the earth. If you stand in front of this tank and just have a look for any length of time you just count more and more and more babies in there. There's hundreds of little buggers. Uh, and the same with this tank down here. This was the one where it was just meant to be plants and I just happened to have a couple of bristle nose in there. Again, now I've got tons of them, tons of cherry shrimp got a few cherry shrimp orders backed up for people that have been asking about them so I am letting you order but if it's out of stock on the website it's because I don't want to get too many orders backed up and um, so they'll be getting shipped out afterwards and um, yes yeah, so I'm doing really well on bristle noses at least in this tank over here we've just got the goldfish at the moment and a bunch of shrimp the goldfish is basically working his way through all the plants munching on them no matter how much food I put in there this is the goldfish that my wife and daughter rescued when they went on a trip to the local pits at home for a, I think it was a beavers meeting. And they came home with this little guy and I had to find a home for him. And so he's happy enough in there for the time being. Um, there's a couple of bristle noses in there, loads of shrimp, loads of half-eaten plants and quite a bit of algae. Um, so this tank might be getting a rework soon. Nothing in this one at the moment, this was the one where I had the golden rams but if you remember I lost one of them pretty quickly so I got rid of the other one to someone. I've got the blues in here, no action from them but they're looking really good. And some really good colours on these guys. But yeah, nothing happening as of yet. Kinda all empty on the top row, just some more shrimp and some more bristle noses and these just to keep the filters ticking over. Um, and then my snail farm down here, which I don't really need anymore, given that I don't have any puffers at the moment. And I've got my guppies down here. These are, I got rid of a load of guppies recently. Um, so these are just a few that were left over, a few fry that were in one of the tanks that I kind of forgot about that are growing out. Some of these are really nice. Um, if we can focus on them. It's nice colours anyway. Not that the camera will focus on them for you, but you'll just have to take my word for it. These yellow ones especially. And then this tank here will be the discus tank. So, a bit frustrated that I've got some empty tanks at the moment. And not really any way to get out and pick fish for myself, but... Using online possibly is the way to go at the moment. Um, I have been considering what to do with my tank upstairs as well in the office and whether or not to turn that into a, a snakehead tank, another go at puffers possibly, but I'm not having much luck with puffers so I really want to think about that for a while, or possibly even flower horns. Um, I've been getting really interested in them recently as well and reading all about them. But for the time being we will focus on discus, uh, let's call this entry number one in the discus breeding vlog if you haven't already click that subscribe button and click that bell and then you'll know when I bring out a new video and you can follow along and see what's happening and um, hopefully I'll give you updates on this every week or so and we'll get some action to talk about quite soon but until then thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time bye bye